go. Okay, throw a gun. Give us a little background. How, where are we going? How far do we have to go? Um, you're going up into the dome, um, between 250 and 300 stairs. It's roughly 18 stories high. No elevators from here. No elevators from here. And this is the easiest part of the climb, is this st staircase here. When we go up there, just walk, start watching your head and your feet because right. there are places where it angles. There is that yellow and black tape, but just yeah. be aware of where you're walking just because at times it does angle and you don't want to. It's all padded, but you know, if you can avoid hitting your head, you want to. Okay. 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 All right. It's a long and narrow and somewhat tiring trip up to the top of the dome. One enters the, um, the dome tour by climbing a staircase, which lands you on top of the roof. What you're looking at is, you're looking at a, the, the rounded brick wall that stands on top of the original sandstone wall. And you're there looking at the sandstone drum of the original dome that was built in the 1820s by the architect Charles Bullfinch. And you're underneath, and you can actually look up and see the 72 brackets, which hold the columns that you see from the outside. That's where you really start the, the, the tour of the dome. And you, you go up a zigzag back staircase to uh, a little door, which puts you through the brickwork, through this massive five million pounds of brickwork that were added to the top of the old walls to knit the new ironwork with the existing structure. And through that five million pound brick wall is a little opening. And you go through that little opening, ducking your head down as you go. And you turn and you land yourself on what we call the first visitor's gallery. When you're at the first visitor's gallery, you're in this narrow um, aisle. It seems very spacious because you have the entire uh, one million cubic feet of the rotunda to one side of you and you have these large windows looking off to the east on the other side of you so you don't have a feeling of claustrophobia. You can look out the windows and see the Supreme Court, the Library of Congress, or you can look down and see the people in the rotunda below. You could also look up and see the great painting of the apotheosis of Washington. And you continue up these uh, series of steps and ramps until you go through a door which puts you in what we call the interstitial space. And that is the space between the outer dome and the inner dome, which looks like you might be in the hull of a ship. You see these large, incredibly uh, heavy, strong trusses which curve up and hold the inner dome and the outer dome um, bolted together, these large bolts. But a remarkably simple uh, engineering design. But it is so impressive to see the scale of these, of these structural members and to see the backside of the uh, coffers. When you see the interior dome, which has these wonderful octagonal coffers, they look great from when you see them on the floor below in the rotunda, but they are spectacular when you see them from the backside when you're visiting the dome. When you're going through the interstitial space, you're on a small, steep, but very, very sturdy staircase that winds its way rather intricately through the trusses uh, and over the arching belly of the interior dome as it makes its way to the second visitor's gallery underneath the great painting. One hundred and eighty feet three inches from that on the floor of the rotunda. That is eighteen stories and you're technically not at the top of the dome yet. One of the neat things is you can talk as loud as you want up here and they can't hear anything that you say in the rotunda. Is that right? Yeah. And if I go to the other side, you can hear my voice completely, perfectly, because of the uh, elliptical shape of the dome. Right. The painting is called The Apotheosis of George Washington, uh, done by Constantino Bromidi. Uh, it took him 11 months to paint this. Um, this is his most know, famous, well-known work. Um, for this reason, they sometimes call him the Michelangelo or Michelangelo of the Capitol. There was a scaffold in here and basically sat on a chair and painted above his head. 
4,664 square feet. It's done in fresco, which is the process of applying wet mortar to the ceiling or, and mixing paint, pigments, and water together. It's the most durable kind of painting there is, and Bermini was the first artist to do this work in the country. And that's why they hired him for the Capitol, because they like that kind of work. Right up in the center there, you can see George Washington sitting there. It's called the Apotheosis of Washington, which means he's ascending into the heavens to become a god. He knew most people were going to be looking at it 18 stories down, so that's why he made it this way. But at the same time, he puts all the details. I mean, look at the rope on that horse, the detail work, because he knew also people would be up here looking at it. It is awesome just to stand in the rotunda and see Brumidi's painting and the, and the ceiling and, and to look up and it's just there's nothing like it in the world. One of the big points of it is that Brumidi put George Washington in the center of the Capitol. Washington is rising up into heavens like he's some kind of a saint or a hero and that almost seems funny to us today. We wouldn't portray a president that way necessarily. But it was um, common to show George Washington like that in the 19th century, a lot of artists um, did earlier. I think the apotheosis represents just what it's supposed to. It is a, he is being treated as a god. That's the concept, it's a Greek term. Uh, meaning that uh, in a sense that when you've been such a wonderful person on earth, the other gods want to take you up to, to heaven with them. Ascending into the heavens, he's surrounded by the 13 colonies. Just on either side of him are, um, are two figures, and you can see that one of them is holding something that looks like an ax inside a bundle of sticks. Those are fasces. It's an ancient Roman symbol of power and authority of government. Each little shaft is very delicate, and you can break it pretty easily, but you put a whole a lot of them together, and they're very strong. And that reflects, of course, not only the ancient Roman idea that the Roman people together are strong, but also the idea in America that together we create a great nation.